subscribe to our channel for latest video series on GAIN, UGC, NET and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Now we look at a question on discrete time systems. So uh, they've given that on supplying the system, supplying a discrete time system with impulse input, we got this as output, we got 2, 4 as output. And now they're asking if the input is changed to some function fn, some in signal fn which is defined as this one, then what is going to be the output? Now see, since the system is a LTI system, we can use the properties of linearity and time invariance to calculate the output. Here we're not calculating the output using convolution integral see why uh, suppose this is my system this was my LTI system when I supplied input as del n when I supplied input as impulse unit impulse function then I got output as 2 comma 4 right this was my obtained output now I changed the input and made it 1 comma 3. Now I am interested in finding output. See one way of finding the output would be convolution of these two signals. But since these are very small signals what can I say? I can represent xn. This xn can be written as del n that is an impulse of value 1 which occurs at n is equal to 0 and an impulse of value 3 plus 3 which occurs at n minus 1. Now see response of this system to unit impulse was del n then response of the system to del n minus 1 is going to be h n minus 1 why since the system is time invariant since the system is time invariant what is going to happen is shift of unity in the input is going to create is going to yield similar shift same shift in the output then if the input is shifted by one unit the output is also going to shift by one unit right so now see if I just try to find out output y n y n which is t of x n what can I write it I am just writing x n as del n plus 3 del n minus 1 now since the uh, system is a linear one linear system I can write this as output to del n response to del n plus 3 since 3 is a constant I can take it outside 3 into response to del n minus 1 now response to del n we know was h n so this is going to be h n plus 3 into h n minus 1 this is going to be my output since this is not a very feasible method this is not possible to perform every time you are given an input and you have to calculate the output this cannot be done every time right you, you cannot shift the signal every time then add then perform all these functions that is why we introduce the concept of convolution integral okay uh, anyways just look at this right now now you already know hn what is hn minus 1 going to be hn minus 1 means i have shifted this signal to right by one unit if you just shift the signal to right by one unit value which occurred at n is equal to 0 previously is going to occur at n is equal to 1 at n is equal to 0 we get a new sample new sample of value 0 so this is hn minus 1 3 into hn minus 1 what is going to happen each value is going to get multiplied with 3 so this is going to become 0 comma 6 comma 12 right now if you just try to calculate y n y n would be addition of these two signals 2 comma 4 plus 0 comma 6 comma 12 therefore sample at n is equal to 0 is going to be 2 10 and 12 so this is going to be my response response of the system to given input now see if you solve the same question using graphical method or analytical method it's going to take much less time if you just apply convolution integral to this kind of uh, signals it's going to take much less time why because see uh, since these signals were of finite duration very small duration they had two samples each this kind of procedure was comfortable to follow but in case these are not such small duration signals such this suppose they have six to seven samples each then this procedure is going to take a lot of your time right and if you try to apply these type of procedure to any generic signal that is uh, that that continues till infinity and you are going to get the answer right but for very small signals you can just follow the simple procedure and get the answer like this fine 
So uh, we given an input u n and impulse response alpha to the power n u n and uh, they are asking you to simply calculate the output using convolution integral. So you know that output y n is given as convolution of input with the impulse response h n right. So this is going to be u n convolution with alpha to the power n u n or see if you find shifting in this signal difficult this we know that this convolution is commutative. So I can also write that y n is equal to h n convolution x n this is going to be the same thing ok. See according to the given signals according to the given out input and impulse response you have to decide that which order you need to follow. If you find shifting in this say this is a simple signal right this is easy to shift. So I am I will prefer to sh make a shift in this signal. This is a complicated signal multiplication of two terms. So I will not prefer shifting this signal although it is not going to create any difference ok you are going to yield the same input. So I am going to uh, solve both of them separately and we will see that we need uh, we, we uh, get to the same output right. So this is going to be alpha n u n convolution with u n right. So I am going to solve this first we see that what in output we are going to get by this and then we verify commutativity of the convolution ok. So uh, this is going to be summation minus infinity to infinity u k alpha n minus k u n minus k. Now see this u k is going to be defined for all values of k greater than equal to 0 whereas this u n minus k this is going to be defined only for values of k ok if I just try to sketch this we have done this a lot of times before just see it once more. So this is how u n plus k looks like. This is when n is less than 0 and this is when n is greater than 0. Now if you just flip it, if you just reverse it in time, this is u n minus k for n less than 0 and right. this is u n minus k for n gre uh, greater than 0 yeah right. So you see that this u k and u n minus k are going to have intersection only when n is greater than 0. In case when n is less than 0, in case when n is less than 0 they are not going to have even a single sample in common. In this case they are going to have some samples in common which would be from n k is equal to 0 to n. So I can just modify these limits and change them from k is equal to 0 to n this is going to be alpha to the power n minus k and I am multiplying it with u n which implies that this n needs to be greater than 0 for this integ for this summation to exist ok. If n is less than 0 this summation is not going to exist. Now what can we say I can take alpha to the power n outside this in summation because the cons this uh, variable of summation is k. So this is going to be summation k is equal to 0 to n alpha to the power minus k. Now you uh, ok. So if I just start writing this, this is going to be 1 plus alpha to the power minus 1 plus alpha to the power minus 2 and so on until alpha to the power minus n. Now this is a GP, this is a geometric progression in which each term, each next term is obtained by multiplying the previous term with 1 by alpha right. So 1 by alpha is going to be the common ratio and 1 is going to be the first term. Now since this is a finite GP, I am using the formula of sum of a finite GB which is first term into 1 minus common difference raised to the power total terms. Now see total terms in these GP is n plus 1, total terms in this GP is not n ok. We have included k is equal to 0 also, this is a difference in discrete time ok. You need to be very careful with the number of terms. So number of terms in this GP is n plus 1 right upon 1 minus common ratio. So this is going to be the sum. Uh, if I just simplify this, this is going to be alpha to the power n, right. I am multiplying complete equation uh, by alpha, so this is going to become alpha minus again if I just form this multiplication, this is going to become 
alpha to the power n plus 1 minus 1 upon alpha minus 1 into u n. Right? So, this is what I have got on convoluting these two signals. Okay, now, if I perform, if I try to perform this convolution by changing the order, let us see if I am getting the same result or not. Right? So, it is going to be k from minus infinity to infinity alpha k u k u n minus k. Now, see simply already we have seen this n minus k right and we know that this u k into u n minus k is going to exist only for k values from 0 to n. So, uh, directly I am just changing the limit is going to be k is equal to 0 to n alpha k and I am multiplying with u n to signify that this n needs to be greater than 0 only for this intersection to exist. Okay. So, uh, again similarly I am going to uh, perform this, this, this is going to be a GP, first term is going to be 1, then next term is going to be alpha, alpha square till alpha to the power n. Again this is a finite GP, so sum is going to be first sum, first term into 1 minus common difference to the power number of terms upon 1 minus common ratio, which is the same right. If you take minus 1 common multiply numerator norm to the minus 1, so it is going to become, which is same as this one ok. But see this took less efforts, less time, why? Because we made a shift in this unit step signal, we did not make a shift in this signal ok. Uh, and one more thing, see this GP was finite, this GB was convergent. See, for us GP to be summable, for a sum of a GP to be defined, the GP must be converging. Converging means it should not lead to its nth term should not be infinity, ok. For since this alpha was lying between 0 and 1, we could say that this GP is convergent. That is, it is going to decrease every time. Every time you multiply it with alpha, since alpha lies between 0 and 1, this GP is going to decrease in value. That is why we could use this formula of sum, right. So, we got the same answer which means that this convolution integral is commutative in nature, right. Uh, now, we are going to look at another question. So, now again they are giving you the input and impulse response and they are asking you to evaluate the convolution, right, simple convolution sums. So, if you just start with this first part, yn is going to be xn convolution hn. Right, xn is going to be alpha to the power n un convolution beta to the power n un. Now, if you just try to uh, evaluate this summation, this is going to be k from minus infinity to infinity alpha k u k into beta n minus k u n minus k. We have already seen that these two uh, unit step signals are going to have some common parts, some in uh, some common samples occurring from k is equal to 0 to n only ok. They are going to have intersection for k values ranging from 0 to n only. So, simply I can change the limits from k is equal to 0 to n this is going to be alpha k into beta to the power n minus k. Now, see again that uh, we have we've discussed this already right for this intersection to exist n needs to be greater than 0 only. Only when n is greater than or equal to 0 this is going to exist. In other cases, this is not going to exist, okay. For n less than 0, the summation is going to be 0. Now, I can take out beta to the power n because it is independent of this summation. So, this is going to be k to the power 0 uh, to n alpha by beta whole to the power k, right. For instead of writing this n greater than equal to 0, I am just multiplying this signal with u n. u n simply signifies that n can be greater than 0 or greater than equal to 0 only. Uh, now, again this is a GP, finite GP which is going to have sum as first term for this GP is going to be 1 into 1 minus common ratio is alpha by beta. Number of terms is going to be n plus 1 upon 1 minus alpha by beta into u n. Now, see one thing that you can see here is this is going to be the sum only when alpha is not equal to beta, right. If alpha is equal to beta, this is going to be 1 and then in that case sum is going to be beta to the power n. 1 added n plus 1 times is going to give you n plus 1 into u n. 
so this is going to be sum when alpha is equal to beta okay when alpha is equal to beta this is going to be the sum and when alpha is not equal to beta this is going to be your convolution integral fine <coughs> so you can just uh, simplify this or maybe leave it here also uh, even that is not a problem so this is how you are convoluting two signals in discrete time okay now look at this next part also y n is going to be see since this is having minus signs in it okay so uh, when i convolute them i am going to perform h n convolution x n right i do not want to make shifts in this signal okay i am not interested so this is going to be alpha to the power minus n u minus n so this is going to be summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity alpha to the power minus k u minus k into alpha n minus k u n minus k right now we need to see where these two signals are going to have their intersection okay so for that purpose i'm going to sketch these signals okay one more thing see u of minus k is not the reversed time reversed signal of uk okay see uk has a sample occurring at k is equal to 0 also whereas u of minus k is not having any sample at k is equal to 0 u of minus k is going to have samples starting from starting from k is equal to minus 1 right this is not going to have sample at k is equal to 0 no sample at k is equal to 0 if you want a sample at k is equal to 0 that is if you found time reversed signal of uk it is going to be u of minus k minus 1 okay u of minus k minus 1 is going to have sample starting from k is equal to 0 fine so this is u of minus k anyways if you try to sketch u of n minus k now you can see that i need we've already seen how u of n minus k looks like right for n less than 0 this is how u of n minus k looks like u of n minus k see we have seen this multiple times so i am not sketching it again you can just verify by sketching it yourself this is how u of n minus k is going to look like for n less than 0 now if you see that these two signals are going to have intersection only if n is less than 0 and they will have intersection from minus infinity to n right so these limits are going to be modified how limits are going to be from k from minus infinity to n alpha minus k alpha n minus k and and for what condition then n should be less than 0 n should only be less than 0 right it cannot be equal to 0 also okay fine uh, so if n is less than 0 what is this going to become i can take alpha to the power n outside so this is going to be summation minus into to n alpha to the power minus 2k and with condition that n should be less than 0 only right so uh, if i just start expanding this first term for this gp is going to be alpha to the power minus 2n then alpha to the power minus 2 n minus 1 and so on till till 0 last term is going to be 0 now since this gp is conversion that is its value keeps on decreasing and, and finally becomes 0 and this is an infinite gp then sum for this gp is going to be a that is first term upon 1 minus r r is the common ratio what is going to be the common ratio for this one alpha to the power minus 2 and for n less than 0 uh, if you just simplify this this is going to become alpha to the power n minus 2n on 1 minus alpha to the power minus 2 right uh, just simplify it further i am multiplying all the terms with alpha square so this is going to become just write this n less than 0 I am multiplying this with u of minus n if I wanted n less than or equal to 0 then I should have multiplied this with u of minus n minus 1 only u of minus n minus 1 starts from n is equal to 0 okay if I want n values less than 0 only then I can multiply with